Hey, Mr. Parker here to do an update. <clears throat> I got some good stuff, some uh, cheap stuff, everything in between. So let me start with the Blu-rays. All right, we got Aftershock, which was, I believe, produced by Eli Roth. Also has Eli Roth in it. And, uh, you know, you hear some pretty negative things about this. And uh, some of that is justified. I watched this one, and, uh, you know, at points, it got really serious, really gritty. And you felt really bad for the people at, point, uh, at some times. And other times, uh, the, the, the human nature of the movie was really down and gritty and cruel. But the uh, kind of uh, end of the world effects, the disaster movie stuff was over the top and goofy at the same time. So I was thinking, what's this movie going for? It's kind of like something like uh, Killer Fish meets uh, Eden Lake. And it's just, I like parts of it. I didn't like other parts of it. And there's one scene with a gated community and a character named Polo who I like, and I just, I almost turned it off after that scene. But I finished it, there's some good gore, some good, uh, there's some decent acting in there as well, but, uh, you know, it's, it's a mixed bag for sure. It's not amazing, a lot of people hate it, and I was irritated at points, but enjoyed other points. At first I was really liking it, and then as it got on progress, it turned into the, oh, yeah, everyone's going to be a, a shitty person type deal. And then we have Dread, which, you know, when I saw the trailer, I was like, oh, it looks iffy, but everyone kept saying it was awesome. Uh, friends of mine that I know, like, everyday basis here, and uh, film fans, and uh, other friends of mine, and they were saying it was an awesome movie, so I popped it in, and it is awesome. Uh, really entertaining, really uh, action-packed, really a uh, Violent and uh, it's a lot like the original Robocop that is dread really cool dreads in this uh, giant uh, Futuristic building with hundreds of criminals and there's this drug called slow-mo that slows down the brain very entertaining movie Very cool would watch a sequel would enjoy it. We have hatchet three I watched this and uh, you know what uh, I enjoyed it more than the second one that is for sure the first one's still the best the Second one I thought was really just a bunch of really hokey I like the gore, but it felt like they were like, we have nothing here except a bunch of elaborate gore set pieces. Uh, well, throw that shit together. We don't need to write a script. Poor fans will eat that shit up. The retards. That's what I felt like they were saying to us, but uh, I'm wrong. Obviously, it was made for fun, probably. But the third one has a better story, a uh, high, high kill count. I, I just think that the acting's better. I don't know. The writing was terrible in the second one. I thought it was some of the worst delivery I've ever seen from Daniel Ayers. It was the worst performance ever. And she's a good actress, so I was like... What the hell's going on here? But this one uh, I enjoyed more. Good, fun, good kills, good stuff. Then we have uh, The Place Behind the Pines, Beyond the Pines. I've not watched this. Um, everyone from my dad to my friends say it's a good movie. I will be checking it out. Everyone likes this. Um, my boy Cage Voigt said it's a great movie. Watched it, or is it Dylan Rhodes? I don't know. Those guys uh, from Winkerland, I think they both liked it, but I'm not sure which one told me. A Boy and His Dog from a Scream Factory, Shout Factory. I've never seen this movie. I know it's bad to say. I know it. Is Star John Johnson in this? Yeah. Don Johnson. Futuristic post-apocalyptic movie. Figured I'd watch it on Blu-ray for the first time. Incredible Belting Man from Scream Factory on Blu-ray. That's right. I bought this movie like 12 times. Now I bought a steel book, uh, a couple of imports, you know. And now I must own the Blu-ray. Really fun, goofy. Throwback to 50s movies, fun stuff. Zombie Massacre, didn't watch this yet. I um, don't know, haven't heard anyone say a word to me about it. But it wasn't a very expensive Blu-ray. A Zombie Massacre, with the cheesy zombie reaching out on FBA. Then we have The Demented, again, another one no one talked about. I have no clue these are any good. I'm just blind buying stuff now because I'm lonely. No one talks to me anymore. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I don't know why I do this. Like this, why did I do this? I have the, the import in, haven't even watched it, and then I'm like, oh, it's only twelve ninety nine. I might as well grab it. The antiviral IFC Blu-ray of, uh, antiviral, but uh, David Cronenberg's son directed this. I haven't watched this. Maybe I'll wait for the next edition to come out, and I'll buy that and not watch that, and then watch it like 10 years later. I don't know. I'm stupid, but uh, it's antiviral. And we have Under the Bed. This was by uh, Stephen Miller. And he did the, uh, I think he did the Silent Night movie. And I like the Silent Night semi-remake. But uh, Under the Bed, you know, it, it's kind of a slow burn. It's definitely a slow burn. And, you know, the first, like, hour, you're like, eh, it's okay. I thought the acting was kind of shaky except for the dad. The last 20 minutes is really rock solid. Great gore, cool monster. And it didn't do that 
stupid shit where I thought it would do that every movie from the time did from back in the 80s. But yeah, it's kind of cool to have brothers fighting this monster and no one really believes them. Kind of felt like something out of the 80s, at least the plot. Under the bed, that's worth a look for sure. Really cool monster. And Tower of, uh, Tower of Evil. I think I had this DVD. I haven't got a chance to watch it, but man, they're making this from Scorpion Release. And this sounds like a nasty movie that got passed up. Graphic shocker is plenty of bare flesh and sexual activity in addition to its horrors to hold interest, and that's during the film's quieter moments. John Stanley Creature Features. I actually have that book. But, uh, yeah. I'm not going to pass on Scorpion. And The Fog. Man, I haven't watched this since, uh, since the first DVD came out of it, and this is Screen Factory again. Uh, John Carpenter is pretty much... You know, he's not my personal favorite American horror director, but he probably is the best American horror director, him or Romero, to me. That's my favorite. I know people are like, Alfred Hitchcock, and I'm like, well, I'm an 80s, 70s guy, so I'm going with those guys. But uh, The Fog, classic, Tom Hankins, Adrian Barbeau. We got uh, Kiss the Damned, Her Love Will Never Die. Have not watched this either. Looked interesting. Uh, people are compared to some blood uh, for uh, Erna, and I heard it's much better. I don't know. I have not watched this one yet. The other one I thought was alright. Then we have The House of Seven Corpses by Severn. You know, I've not watched this either. This was, a, I think, an image and then something happened and it got out of print and there was a shitty DVD of Gideon or something out there like that. And the baby had the same fate and then Severn came and picked him up. But uh, this was also supposed to be released at the same time House of the Straw Hill, which is a video nasty with Udai Kerr. And that keeps getting pushed back, so I don't know when that's coming out. But that is The House of Seven Corpses. Then we have the On Scene from Scorpion Films. I haven't watched this either. It's a Blu-ray, 80s slasher movie. Hope those are coming in all right. If not, you're just going to have to take my word for it. The Odd Angry Shot. Now, this movie I know nothing about. Classic Australian war film. In Vietnam, the name of the game is Survival. Sounds entertaining to me. I like war movies, especially crazy ones. And I like Australian movies, especially crazy ones. And then... uh. Uh, I seen Drive. I, I dug Drive. I thought Drive was a really great movie. So I went around, you know, I started collecting the other guy's work. And uh, the one I watched first was uh, Bronson, because that's the one that everybody was saying, gotta check Bronson out. And I've heard uh, my buddy say that, uh, he said that it was an okay movie with a great performance. I agree to some extent, but I think it's a good movie with a great performance. I think it's a little better than okay. I think that it's uh, unique and uh, just wild and weird, and uh, again, it, it kind of, you got to get stuck because it's a true story that you can't really go off the deep end too much and just make up something that didn't happen, but they go off the deep end a lot with just weird things that are in his head. Soundtrack is really cool. I love the part in the mental institution with the song Sin playing and all the mental handicapped people are getting down. It's a great part, and uh, Tom Hardy is just amazing in this. I wasn't bad. Well, not bad, bad. Just the lighting on his face with his mustache in that scene, I love it. I love uh, Tom Hardy. I just watch a highlight of his acting in this movie because he's nuts. He's based off a real-life prisoner, and he does a great job. I, mean, I wouldn't even say he's nuts. He's just unique and different and really great at it. And then we have, uh, this is pretty cool, His Devil's Night, which was by uh, Maggot, uh, Michael Snyder, Maggot's film, Films That Will Kill. This is kind of like a remastered, re-edited, different version of Our Devil's Night, which I have seen and I have reviewed. And this is a special Red Case edition. comes with a bunch of cool stuff in there. He did a hand drawing in here, which says, Dave Parker is a fucking devil. Which is pretty cool. And there's some unique stuff in here. Looking forward to watching this. I did like the, uh, the original cut. I thought it was really different and... Uh, fun, not fun, demented and fun at the same time. Demented and fun at the same time, that's the only word I can explain that movie. Because most of the time when it's, it's just like not happy demented. It was fun though in a Halloween disgusting spirit. I enjoyed it. It's a good movie. Then we have Turkish Delight, which is by uh, the man Paul Verhoeven, who did American films Basic Instinct, Total Recall, Rebel Cop, and Starship Troopers. Three of those movies are some of my all-time favorites. Basic Instinct's a cool, it's a cool movie, but you know, I love Robocop, Total Recall, Starship Troopers, but this is Turkish Delight, and you know, this is the Anchor Bay, it's out of print, uh, I had a bidding war on this and a Fourth Man, I didn't get Fourth Man, but I got this one, and this is Rugger Hauer in it, yeah, looking forward to this one, this one's supposed to be a little different, I don't know, it's supposed to be really crazy and different, then we have uh, from Code Red, still pulling through with some good titles, Curse of the Blue Lights, I love the cover out of this movie, I had like bootleg, 
I always looked at the cover art and been like, I want to watch that. And I always put in the bootleg and start watching. I'm like, this can be interesting. And I lose interest for some reason. Maybe it was the picture quality or something. But I do want to check this one out. And I'm glad it got released. And this is the, I think it's the unrated edition. Which, I don't know. It's rated R. So maybe it's not unrated. But I'll survive. Then we have this new release of an awesome movie, which is probably my favorite demon movie. Possession movie, I'd call it, because I'm not huge into possession movies, unless you're considered, like, Night of the Demons, Demons, Savage Harvest, stuff like that. I love that kind of stuff. I love the demon transformation and ripping people apart. Some of my favorite stuff, Demon Knight. But uh, as for, like, uh, I guess this would be more like that as well, like, like possession, like Exorcist. I prefer Evil Speak. Uh, this movie's great. I've probably talked about it before. I had the Anchor Bay edition. I think this is a different cut. It's definitely a brand new master. It's got a great cast. It's got Clint Howard at like 20, still balding. R.G. Armstrong, the Luca Bravo, or whatever his name is from uh, The Godfather. That's the guy I'm least interested about in the movie, which is bad, I know, because everyone's like, oh, it's got the guy from Emperor of the North and uh, the guy from the original Longest Yard, a little Weasley guy. And uh, who's the guy I'm really thinking of in this? Oh, Don Stark. Bob from that 70s show is a bully. This movie's freaking awesome. I haven't watched this edition yet. Uh, head Chopping. Richard Mole's in it from Nightcore. Head Chopping stuff here. Great movie. They pick on him. He gets revenge. It's 81. It's gore fest. It was a video nasty. It's one of my favorite movies as well. This sucker paid probably a lot for it. It's been resealed. It's not brand new. But I'm glad I got it. And uh, I had to open it up and make sure it was a bootleg. Because I was like, I did not just pay that for a bootleg. This movie I've been hunting for a while. And... Uh, Really, really wanted to see it because uh, uh, Tim Gross's book, he gave it like the highest rating. And I was like, man, Jim Van Bever's in that too. Joe Bob Briggs, let's check it out. Zombie Cult Massacre. If you can find this, I think it's worth your time from everyone saying it. It's a low budget zombie, but I haven't watched it yet. That's what everyone's saying. It's worth my time. Got to check it out. Uh, looks entertaining. I love zombie movies. I love low budget horror movies. And this is their, like a time, you know, uh, or there weren't that many great ones. Let me see. So, I think it was like 2000 or something like that. I don't remember. 97. It's kind of hard to find a great zombie movie at that time. We have another one by uh, Nicholas, I'm going to say, Winding Rent. Rem I can't say his name. You know, the guy who's driving Bronson. I just talked about him. Fear X with John Turturro. This is a PG-13 movie. I didn't pay much for it. I just wanted to kind of complete his uh, movies. I'm not going to get... He did a couple TV movies or something like that that I'm not interested in at all. But this is Fear X. I always seen that cover, but I never had an interest in it before. I didn't really know what it was. We have Plaggers, which uh, looked interesting enough from Image. Director did Death Factory. Then we have uh, Bigfoot, The Lost Coast Tapes. I've seen this macabre label up there, and they released a bunch of stuff. Under the Bed was on their label, and some more stuff as well. I have not watched this, but that might be a label to look out for. Then we have... Uh, this guy is putting out some good stuff here. Again, he's put uh, boarding houses out here, and uh, he put out the Death Nurse movies. I haven't got a chance to watch them, but I'm just happy to have them so I know that they're not going anywhere. We have Cemetery Sisters and Nick Millard film or Mallard film. He's like infamous for doing bad movies. He also did, what is the other ones? Did he do Criminally Insane or Crazy Fat Ethel? Those movies, I think he did. And uh, I think those are out on DVD, and so are the Death Nurse movies now, thanks to Slasher Video. Uh, that is Cemetery Girls. I know that cover looks kind of dark on here. And then we have Boarding House, which is also, I guess, remastered. Much better print than the Code Red print, is from what I'm hearing. Then we have uh, Blood of a Thousand Virgins. And you know, I think this is another compilation thing, and with just the host in there for Full Moon. Full uh, Moon. You know, I'm not sure if I'm going to get the Legend of Wolf Woman I seen floating around because really I have the Scream Factory, the Shout. Shriek Show, I kind of get confused all these labels. Shriek Show edition, and I doubt it's better looking than that one. But it's uh, Addicted to Murder 1 and 2. This is by a, like, a semi-famous underground director who's got a cult following. This is out of print. I got a pretty good deal on him, so I couldn't pass him up. And uh, I think Joel B. Winecoop's in this, so Addicted to Murder 1 and 2. And they star someone, too. Uh, Sasha Graham who's really cool in uh, Polymorph and some other films, and uh, Bloodletting. She doesn't have big roles in those movies, but she does a good job. Then we have uh, Jolie Weinkoop directed this movie. It's an old one, The Lost Fate, where he's like a cheesy karate comedy movie. I love the tagline on there. He lost his wife, he lost his patience, he lost his faith. Uh, if you guys are unfamiliar with Jolie Weinkoop, get familiar with him. Go get Dirty Cop No Donut and prepare to be in hilarity heaven. I, w I should say hog heaven because he's a cop in it, but you know... It's just too obvious, I guess. 
Uh, then we have Headless Eyes, which I've not seen, but this movie's infamous for, like, being a crap fest, and, you know, it's, a, it's a, the infamous cover is the same cover as Killer Eye that they use later on, but it's just, like, a very famous cover art, and, uh, you know, those wizard tape with that cover art always were popular. These are, I think, VHS rips. And this is The Possession, which is uh, by Ralph Kemper. I think this is the same guy that directed that movie Toxic Lullaby. I have not watched this. See, I actually wanted this one at first, but there was a mishap and I, from Go Hastings, they got some pile of crap called Possession, and I was like, nah, I don't want that. But I kept it anyways, because they just were like, just keep it, because it was like a buck. I ended up getting this off Amazon. It's called Possession. This one, I was happy to get. I haven't watched it. Uh, it even tells me how to pronounce it on there, which is really cool, because I can't pronounce shit. Watch me butcher it still. Kamara? Kamara. Uh, and this is basically, uh, a.k.a. Monkey Boy. This is the DVD version of Monkey Boy. Monkey Boy's cover art as a kid always freaked me the hell out. He was always like, what is that old monkey doing? That monkey man with that stuffed animal. He's like, oh. I was like, I don't know if I ever rented it or if I seen parts of it. Because it was like, I don't think it was rated R. It might have been, but it shouldn't have been. I don't know. It's just, I never rented it because it freaked me out. And this is the movie now. This cover is still just as creepy. It's like, that monkey man standing in the back in the shadows. Like, I don't know. Kimura, probably not like the band at all, but uh, this is the Pusher Trilogy by the same guy who did, uh, you guys know that, uh, Drive, all three of them together, Pusher, Pusher with Blood on My Hands, and Pusher 3, I'm the Angel of Death. People seem to love these, and they even remade it, and I seen it at the video store, and I was like, mm, no, I'm going to check out the originals even before I think about picking up that remake, and I'll probably I'll see my, what's going on. Man, I'm not even halfway done. This one is... Uh, Someone down there likes me. Got from Diabolic. It's weird because this cover art's not the one they advertise on, but the side and the back are the same. Uh, this is a Czechoslovakian horror movie, I believe, and the guy sells his soul to get revenge. But, uh, yeah. Sounds, it's supposed to be like the most violent movie from there. And I bought a Wither, which is an exploitation movie. Good label. And uh, this is like the Swedish answer to Evil Dead remake or Evil Dead. Gory, I did a review for it. It's a pretty cool movie. I enjoyed it. Uh, then we have uh, Demon Resurrection. Couldn't pass this up. This looked goofy, looked crazy. I bought it from the website. It was only like 10 bucks. Looks pretty cool. Then uh, Tim Ritter was cool enough to send me this Twisted Illusions Gold DVD-R backup, which is basically the full-on cut version of Twisted Illusions 1. I have the VHS right here, and I also have a, 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 a combo pack, but this is the actual plain edition. Then we have the Twisted Illusions VHS original, still sealed. Pretty cool. Then we have, uh, since I don't have you the lost super 8 splatter classic by apprehensive films and you don't even really know anything about this movie but it was made in 1992 apprehensive either releases movies that we all have heard about or no one's even knows about it's kind of nowhere you know in the middle then we have bleeder again from the guy who did pusher and those movies and valhalla rising and things like that this is the import have not watched this i think this is his only movie not released over here in the states then we have uh, Filthy, Get Trashed, Widescreen Ultimate Edition, loaded with bonus features, and, uh, yeah, this looks pretty, pretty gross. From It's a short, but it has a bunch of bonus features on there. Lots of people have been talking about this. Well, at least, I know Jason OD got it, but, yeah, it's filthy. It's filthy. Then we have uh, Dr. Frankenstein's Wax Museum of the Hungry Dead. This is by Richard Griffin. You can pick this up on Amazon. You know, he's infamous, not infamous, but he's famous for doing a whole bunch of horror movies. Uh, Exhumed recently and Murder University. But uh, this is the newest. Then we have a reconciled uh, Tim Ritter through this uh, uh, CD in here, which is really cool for free. Reconciled soundtrack. The Tension of the Dead. Uh, don't know much about it. Man, I'm not even. Vanishing Ways by Art Exploitation. I reviewed this. It also comes with a bonus movie on there. Both are pretty cool. Both are worth checking out. Uh, check out the review if you're interested. About a guy that goes into some weird dream uh, place to try to save a girl. It gets really surreal, really crazy, really different. We have Realms of Blood. I only watched the Tim Ritter written segment on here. It's a horror anthology. That one was okay. It was called Cologne. About a guy who gets some cologne that makes him irresistible women. But there's side effects. Mr. Ice Cream Man. Not to be confused with Ice Cream Man with Clint Howard. This is a completely different uh, beast. Have not watched this. Supposed to be gory, low-budget, crappy fun. Imported. Again. 
Then we have uh, Meat Market 3. You know, I've seen Meat Market 1, Meat Market 2. I have uh, uh, some of the other guys' films, but this is the one I didn't have. I kind of want to see how the trilogy ends. This is Meat Market 3. I enjoyed the, f the second one's really cool, I think. First one I thought was all right. Then we have some cheapies, some real cheapies. Most of the lies were a buck, no more than a couple. Scarce. These are going to be quick. The American edition of Effie Hopkins, Elfie Hopkins, Cannibal Hunter. Ray Winstone's in this, man. How'd he get in this? Like, we got your daughter kidnapped to be in this movie. He's like, oh, fuck. Coming along license, scum. Big Bad Wolf. I don't know what I'm talking about. I'm really tired, guys. So disregard anything I say that's stupid. And if I say something really smart, just say I'm a genius. I don't know. Whatever, I'm just kidding around. Like, I'm talking out of my butthole right now. Big Bad Wolf. A dollar. Uh, Scar. See, a lot of these I just grabbed because... He's like, those are, I'll give you five for five dollars. And I was like, really? So I just started stacking them up. And before I knew it, I had like 15 movies. And I was like, what am I doing with myself? Savage. I was on like, I can't get one Bigfoot movie without the other one. I got another one. Uh, Dead Alive Films. What is this? Flesh Hunters. They came to Earth for one reason. Well, I, obviously Flesh, I guess. Dead Alive Productions. Buck. The Gleam. I'm not really sure what this is. It wasn't very expensive. We have Attack from Mars, which is an image movie. This looks like a fun horror movie, science fiction, in a movie theater type deal. Sea of Dust, which I believe Tom Zavini had something to do with this movie. That's all I know. The Howling Rebirth, Reborn. I don't. Now I think the only one I need is New Moon, which I don't think's ever been on a United States DVD, and I don't know if there's any imports. Probably some rare, weird country like. Imported or something. Uh, Metal Woods. That lighting looks like crap. Super Hybrid. Killer Car Movie. The Fergusons. About Cannibal Family. Scream of the Banshee. Only got it because it was dirt cheap and it's by the director of Under the Bed. Bite Marks. Might be a second copy. Oh, it looks like a Lost Boys type deal with gore. Grave Encounters 2. I hate that cover art. I actually can't stand that cover art. It looks like something I'd steer clear of, but I heard it's good. King Kong. Two disc for a buck. Original. Probably should have this on Blu-ray or something. I'm not just buying it in some dusty old video store. like. <laughs> but uh, Axe Giant, The Wrath of Paul Bunyan. What we do is a secret. Again, I didn't pay much for these. This is some, like, thing about, uh, what is it? I can't even remember. The Germs punk band. Crawl Space, IFC. Wasteland. Didn't know if I already had this, but I saw it was a cinema on there. And uh, it had mutants on the back. I was like, mutants? I like mutants. The Selling of Scary Manor. You know, somebody recommended this one to me. It might have been Denver Johnson. Speaking of which, a lot of people ask, uh, you know, where I hear about these movies. And if I don't hear them about, like, on Amazon or Diabolic or Fangoria or just stumble across their Facebook page, I'm recommended to them by somebody like Denver Johnson or Jorgen London, who runs an independent blog group. The uh, Jorgen's uh, page will be underneath. Denver doesn't have one. Those guys just are, like, a fountain of knowledge. Like, I, I, I mean... Some people say that to me, like, you know a lot, but these guys probably know even more than me, or at least equal, if not more. It, it's just like when you talk to somebody like that, could speed out movies you never heard of, and back and forth, and it's just really, you learn a lot from them, and hear about things happening all around the world. I just want to give those guys a shout out, because I enjoy talking to them, and I actually learn a lot from them. There's other guys out there, too, that are really great to watch, and whatnot. You know, Extra to Mutilator always has great stuff, and I never heard of. Jason O.D., they're all doing good stuff out there. Uh, Masters of Terror, this was an misunderstanding i think i have every single movie on this thing and it was sent to me so i got it for free it's all crunched up too i don't really want it it's broken and i already have all the movies and it was free but beneath the darkness uh dennis quaid i think he's a killer high school i saw part of this movie on tv and i saw it at the video store and i was like you know i'm gonna check it out it, it looked pretty funny some whole school gets poisoned not poisoned but they get weed brownies and everyone's gonna fail their drug test i don't know what's going on lord of darkness some people are talking about this. It's a gory movie. I think it's from Ireland or somewhere. Scotland. I can't remember where. 
Well, I give up. And you know, Dustin Mills told me the last Universal Soldier was awesome. So I grabbed it. Worth the chance. The first one's awesome. You know, this is getting re-released along with the Killer Tomatoes Eat France. But I figured for $3 brand new, I'd get the Killer Tomatoes Eat France. Because I strike back. Because I already have Eat France. So I can live with not the double feature. Just them separate. So now I have all the Killer Tomato movies. So I won't watch them. Uh, the Rambler. Again, Denver Johnson said this director is worth checking out. He also did another movie. I can't think of the Oregonian. The or well, bleh, I didn't say that right. And then we have Diablo. Diablo. So I am Diablo. But uh, yeah, this looked cool. It looked like a fighting movie. Breaking Glass. Looks like an Xboxer. Gets in some trouble. Whoops some ass. Kills some people. Uh, Rampart. 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 Ugh, sorry about that, guys. Woody Harrelson is a crooked cop. How, what's not to like? It's Woody Harrelson. Uh, Burning Bright, this is a dollar. The cover's been printed out. It's all sun-faded, printed-out cover, but for a buck. Heard this is a good movie. Through the grapevine. Axed. Fangoria presents. Again, like a dollar. Uh, can't say no. Hunter's Prey. Saw part of this on TV. Looked really weird. Real wild. And then we have Rosewood Lane. Is that who I think it is? Is that Rose McGowan in that? Uh, I think it is Rose McGowan, but it's also directed by Victor Salva. That dude creeps me out. Shriek of the Sasquatch. If you hear it, your heart is dead. It's going to delirious acid flashback to the groovy 1970s. That sounds like it's up my alley. This is that movie that was sent to me on mista by mistake. And I was like, I was like, I don't want this. And then they're like, just keep it. And I was like, all right. Sam Raimi presents The Possession. PG-13. Scary. Yeah. Not watching that. Uh, Albino Farm. The Torture. I think it's an IFC. Die Nur. Spooks and Creeps. This is like four short films on here. One has Alice Cooper, one has Aaron McGregor, one has Timothy Olplan in it. Yeah, Grace Sabinski's in one. Just a bunch of different shorts that I think that, uh, you know, student films all slap together. Sound entertaining. Teenage Zombies. And I don't think this is I Was a Teenage Zombie. But if you guys are track looking for that movie, go to the Spanish or Italian Amazon. They have it there if you have a region free player. Uh, wrong Turn 5. Now I think I have caught up to all the Wrong Turn movies. I watched the first one, hated it, heard the second one. Completely, the rest are completely different. Uh, Come Out and Play, which is supposed to be like a remake of Who Can Kill a Child, which is a really good movie. Uh, slow, but great. The Amazing Adventures of the Living Corpse animated movie looked different. Eaters, which is the American edition of the movie I already bought, uh, Italian zombie movie. The Raven, Hurts Pile of Crap with John Cusack. And, uh, <laughs> Maniac, uh, this is Maniacs with a thing at the end. And I think I got this because it's about two escaped people going nuts. But I think that's my update. I don't think I have anything else to talk about. Oh, if you guys are interested, you guys, uh, I've been doing these videos called, uh, like, Director Spotlight of the Campbell Brothers and Tim Ritter. I'm working on one now. I won't divulge a secret. But if you really bug me, I'll probably tell you. Not on here, though. Not like it's a big deal. But I enjoy doing those. If you guys want to support, you know, check it out. Watch Tim Ritter's. Check out his video. See some of his movies if you're interested. But uh, that's my update. Thank you very much for watching. I'm really tired, really delirious, and made absolutely no sense. In fact, disregard this whole video. This never happened. It's a part of your figment of your imagination. Only a part, though. Take care.